All right, good morning, guys. I got my autopilot out for the first time out in the Brewster pool. Now it's about oh mile and a half, two mile run down the Okanagan from my launch point. So this would be a really interesting test of just the real world capacity of this kayak's range and current and wind. Um, just seeing what the the battery is capable of. I'll be monitoring that today. I'm going after king salmon in the morning. Uh, I'm gonna give it till maybe eight or nine. Uh, if I don't have any sockeye by incidental bycatch by then, I'll switch over to sockeye. The king bite's been really hit or miss here. It's some days it's pretty good in the morning, some days nothing. Um, still pretty early in the salmon season. So just give it a shot, see how it goes, and uh, yeah, just enjoy the time out on the water. So I was just checking my battery. Uh, I have it running at top speed, which is... Uh, a speed level of 10 there's 10 speed settings on this thing i control with the remote you consume way way more battery at the top speed but you really don't gain much additional speed but i was just running it to see i burned 10 amps so i burned 10 percent of my battery's capacity just running down here uh, once i drop to troll speeds that should become far more efficient um, i actually got a cool video looking at how your usage of this motor really impacts your range on this kayak. Okay, on my right side, I'm going to be running a Pro Troll and Super Bait. Original Super Bait, hot tamale, which is my favorite color. It's just red. I'm just waiting to hit a ledge. There's a ledge here. I'm coming down the Okanagan River, and there's a ledge as I move out into the Brewster Pool. It'll drop off from 20 feet down to like 40. All right, here we go. On this rod, I'm going to run a prawn spinner behind a Leo flasher. So Leo is, moves just like a pro troll, but it's just round. It's got these kicker fins. A little windy. Usually is in the morning out here. Let's see how we do. There's fish. And he's off. That was definitely sockeye-ish. There's fish. Still there? Still there. Just drop that back down there. Got one. Got right on that turn. Just like Kokini. Alright, let's get this guy in the boat. Now he wakes oh, and it pops off right there. And of course, I got big king salmon hooks on there, so kind of makes sense actually. I'm actually gonna flip around and go back through that same area. Just a couple bites. Well, I've been trolling for about an hour. See how the battery is doing. We're down 20 amps. So I still have 80 amps. So I still have plenty of battery left. I'm probably gonna give it another half hour, and then I'm gonna switch out at least one rod to uh sockeye gear i got big hooks on this king gear it's not getting me my sockeye today i'd rather catch something so right now i'm running like 10 or 12 ounce cannonballs 45 55 on the line counter getting down there deeper with those kings keeping it tight to the boat because there's so much here but when we go to sockeye i'll just run three ounces at 30 feet easy I'm seeing lots of sockeye being caught no kings so time to make the shift the change I'm using looney coonies um, the owner of this is a really nice guy named Jim he lives in Ridgefield but if you when you order these if you order them for sockeye he'll send you some smaller ones if you let him know um, he's really good about customizing the size to your fishery that. I'm gonna run this Dodger that I snagged off the bottom several years ago with a pink hoochie. It's about a 14, 14, 15 inch liter. Uh, I can just put these little tiny coon shrimp he sends me whole on there and they work great. They're so firm because the way he cures them, he just he goes through and hand picks them out to make sure that they're 
hard and if there's any kind of black or anything on them he throws them away so you always get good quality bait get rid of the pro troll we'll give the other one another 10 20 minutes and we'll switch out I'll save this because I might switch back to it in a little bit. I put some pink tape on it and uh, it seems to work really well. And I just run this 30 feet behind me. Easy peasy. You can see that Dodger has a great action on it. I mean, that thing just whips around like crazy. Oop, miss, miss. See, I was going to take it off. That's why they bit this. Uh, I think it popped off. Yeah, it feels like it. That already swimming at me. Are you swimming at me? There we go. Okay. Oh. <laughs> got him. That's a nice size sockeye. Got him wrapped on the outside of the net there, but nice thing about a big net is you can flip them in. See, that's what happens when you plan to change something out as it starts working for you. All right, so there we go. Nice upper Columbia sockeye, decent size one. Good quality. The meat will cut amazing on this, and I'll show you at the end how just how amazing these fish cut despite their long journey. All right, get this one on ice and uh, get re rigged. Make sure the leader's good after that botched net job. That's the only bummer with a double hook. Sometimes if you go to net them and you miss stab, then you get one hook in the net, and then that, you gotta kind of flip them in. Watch, I'll catch all my sockeye on king gear today. Got this one going. This is also a lure that I snagged off the bottom at Drano Lake. I tend to not buy a lot of gear because I tend to just catch my gear, which is kind of funny. So I had that at 45 feet with 10 ounces. I was getting more sockeye bites on my king gear than I was uh, sockeye gear. Now I might be tempted to change that back out. Oh, see? Yep, I just said. He's off. That was on the, that was another sockeye on the king gear. Oop, there's a hit. There he is, there he is. Another one on the king gear. Someone with it, sees it. Keep that rod tip down. His sockeye love to jump like crazy. All right, I'm gonna swing him. Oh, keep, keep yourself down. There we go. Bounce him right in. All right, that's number two sockeye. Now I can just go back to full-time king gear. This guy's got a little bit of a wound on the tail there, but that shouldn't affect the meat quality too bad. Another sockeye. Okay. Bring my other gear in and flip over to all king gear. Didn't even get anything on the sockeye gear. Got all my sockeye on king gear. Go figure. See if we can find a king here. Might be a bit of a struggle today. So, see, I got... Started fishing right around... 5.15 when I got lines in the water. It's 7 o'clock now, so it took me less than two hours to get a couple of sockeye in the boat. I had a bunch of bites. Uh, I have not had a single king bite, though, so... Let's see how it goes. Let's check the status of my battery as well. I'm curious. See how it's holding up. I still have that long run back to the, to the launch. Let's see. Uh, let's see, I have 73 amps remaining, so I've only burned 27 amps. So I got tons of juice left. I'm only burning about 8 amps per hour uh, trolling. So I'll burn at least 10 getting back. 
and it's seven o'clock i'm probably gonna stay out till between nine and ten when it starts to get too hot so i'll get down to 50 amps so i'll have 40 amps left over by the time i get to the boat ramp approximately i'm estimating so we'll see if that estimate turns out to be true but yeah doing fine warming up it's nine o'clock i'm gonna turn back and start heading up the river sock i bite was great but the kings are a bust okay well i ended up fishing about 45 minutes longer than i had anticipated so my battery's down to 45 amps it should take me about 10 amps to get back um so i should be plenty fine i still have a third of the battery left my voltage never even dropped below 13 volts that's pretty normal for lithium batteries they hold that 13 volt charge and then once it starts to decline, it really plummets very, very quickly. So I'm going to finish up this last 100 yards of the troll, pull my gear in, and then I'll head in. But I do want to show you how well these Upper Columbia sockeye cut before we go. And this is what it's all about right here is this beautiful red meat from these Upper Columbia sockeye. The chickens are like, give me some of that stuff. Um, it maintains its firmness late into the season. They will deplete the oil and fat reserves in there. But the firmness actually remains on like the Chinook, which tend to turn a little bit mushy. Uh, typically, I find the sockeye cut best uh, from when they arrive in July all the way through mid to later in August, whereas the kings really start to get a little bit soft uh, by mid-August. All right, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Uh, the meat maintains its firmness late into the season. No, 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 no. Poppy, no. Jesus. Poppy, you really threw me off.